Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I wanted to share with you some of my favorite books on making comics. I literally just pulled these off of my shelf and these are books that I revisit on a pretty regular basis. You may be familiar with some of these books, but hopefully in this video I can turn you on to at least one new book that you had never heard of or you've never looked through before. So in this video, I just want to flip through some of these books, show you some of my favorite parts and why I love them so much. I'll make sure that I leave a link down below in the description where you can pick up some of these books if you're interested. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so when we're talking about books on making comics, I think this is the perfect place to start. This is, uh, this is the classic How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way by Stan Lee and John Buscema. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before here on this channel. If not on this channel, I've mentioned it um, a lot <laughs> uh, on other social platforms and also in my comics class that I teach. This is actually the very copy that I had since I was a kid. And as you can see, it's actually falling apart. The cover has fallen off of it. Uh, it has seen better days, but it has also been put to really good use as well. As old as this book is, it never really seems to disappoint in terms of providing uh, some really great knowledge. Uh, I still refer back to this book. It covers all the basics and at times, um, you know, sometimes you have to be reminded of those basics when it comes to perspective and anatomy and uh, composition. And um, all of it applies obviously to the language and aesthetic of comic books. But I think that this book is even great just for beginner drawers in general, anyone who's interested in drawing and composing images. Uh, this goes over all the basics and it's written in a really digestible, easy to understand way. And the examples are just amazing because uh, all of the examples are drawn by John Buscema, who's just one of the greatest cartoonists to ever have lived. So um, not a bad reference to learn from for sure. And uh, yeah, like I said, it goes over figure drawing, uh, putting the figure in action. Um, it's funny, some of these examples that I circled here, uh, I, was, I remember literally doing this when I was in the fifth grade in class when I was probably supposed to be doing other things. For whatever reason, I was circling these poses to uh, probably draw and study later. So uh, as you can see, I've had this for quite a long time. When I think of this book specifically, I, I always think of these two examples uh, in this book, which are um, pretty much, it's all, it's all about storytelling and pushing your angles and compositions to make an interesting uh, visual sense of storytelling. And so uh, they give a really basic version of this, a story, like a scene, and then they do the Marvel way, which is always like super dynamic and really pushing the limits and playing with composition and just adding that excitement. Um, and that's for like a superhero scene. But then they give an example here where even just for like a conversational back and forth, like this is actually really not bad, this version right here. Uh, just two people having a conversation in an office and eventually one of them walks out of the office. Uh, this is pretty good, but then this is the Marvel way and all the poses are much more dynamic and the angles are much more interesting. I love that. I remember when I was a kid just being like, oh wow, what a what an awesome shot. So um, so yeah, when I think of this book, I actually think about these uh, examples specifically. And I think just looking at this, you can learn a lot from storytelling, visual storytelling. And it's not to say that this is actually a bad version. It's just that there are several different or infinite amounts of ways that you can tell the same story. So I can go on and on about this book, but uh, this video will be really long. So anyway, if you're one of the very few aspiring comic book artists or a comic book artist who uh, doesn't have this book or has never looked through this book, I definitely, definitely recommend it. Um, it's, it's totally an essential. So uh, yeah, this is number one on my list. Okay, so next book up is this book. It's called Artists on Comic Art, and it's by Mark Salisbury. And um, I will try to leave a link to this book down below, but I'm not sure that it's even in print anymore. So it might be like uh, a used copy or something imported. This was actually imported when I got it. Um, I don't know how I found out about this book. It came out in 2000, so that was a while ago. And I was probably in 2000, I think it was 
like 15 years old. So I saw this, I'm pretty sure I saw an ad for it in an issue of Wizard and I ordered it um, because it just seemed amazing to me. So I just saw the names on the cover and immediately I had to get this book. I mean, you got J. Scott Campbell, especially at that time. He was like one of my favorites. Jim Lee, Frank Miller, Joe Casada, And it's pretty much interviews and process shots of uh, each one of them. So, for instance, this was uh, a look at J. Scott Campbell's Danger Girl process, which I thought was amazing at the time especially I, I couldn't even figure out how figure out how he would draw that small so in this example he's actually showing how he would do his um layouts so he would actually split an 11 by 17 board into four different equal size pages so um the amount of detail that he was actually getting uh, each one of these is just a quarter size that's that's pretty amazing. Even now, I'm still kind of blown away by that. But yeah, there's there's corresponding interviews with each artist. Um, Steve Dillon's process, at the time, I wasn't really a reading Preacher, but um, after I read this, I wanted to check out Preacher because it was really cool to see his process. I remember, um, it's so funny, I haven't actually read this interview in so long, but it's all coming back now. I remember he he stated that he would actually just work right onto the board. So layouts, pencils, and inks, he would start it all on the same board. So this was a shot of his layouts, and then he would just lightly erase that and then just work pencils on top of that and then inking. So there wasn't really like a light boxing or thumbnailing process. He would just go straight onto the board. And uh, speaking of that, uh, there's a Jim Lee interview in here, and he actually mentions uh, having approached it the same way. So there's an old page of one of his uh, X-Men pages actually, which is going back a ways. So he would go right onto the board and then lightly erase and change things as, uh, as he would go, but without doing any layouts or thumbnails on separate pages. So um, that takes a, definitely a, a level of confidence and um, having to really know what you're doing. Uh, so, um, and Jim Lee and, and Steve Dillon are definitely uh, good examples of that. I, I don't recommend that for anyone starting out, but it's cool to see how, how they would actually work. Um, so anyway, this book is really cool. It has just so much, I, I remember just reading and rereading each one of these issues. And, you know, back in 2000, like I didn't have like internet access back then. So there wasn't any Instagram, there wasn't any blogs. It was literally like being able to see like Joe Casada, who was one of my favorites at the time. I, I loved when he was on Daredevil, being able to see his process shots like this, like penciled pages. There was one page in here that just, I couldn't get over the level of detail. Look at that, this funeral scene. That panel in particular, I was like, wow, blown away. So this book is really awesome. I definitely recommend it if you can get your hands on it. Um, you know, in retrospect now, because there are blogs and, and Instagram and uh, so many online resources, you can see so, so many behind the scenes uh, shots of pretty much all of these artists. But um, to have it all collected in a book like this, uh, especially at the time, was really influential on me. So uh, like I said, I'll try to leave a link. But um, I recommend if you could get your hands on this, this is a good one. Okay, so another classic, Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. I'm sure a bunch of you are familiar with this book, and some of you might even have this book. But uh, for those of you who actually don't own this book, one of the things I tell people about this book who haven't read it is uh, two things. One is that it's a little bit deceiving, I think, because of the original cover. I think this is the original cover. Uh, they have since changed the cover, but... Um, it kind of gives off like a playful, like it's a book maybe for kids on how to draw comics, just because of the coloring and the character. But um, it's probably the furthest thing from that. So this book isn't about drawing comics or how to draw comics or anything like that. It's more about the psychology and philosophy behind comics and more about like what the brain does uh, to make sense of comics, like how how the brain actually um, perceives words and pictures together. And uh, by understanding that, um, as a comics creator, you can better 
um, sort of make your storytelling make sense in the minds of the readers. So, uh, yeah, it, Scott McCloud really dissects just uh, the psychology behind comics, uh, pacing and timing. Uh, those are the two things that he talks a lot about in this book that are the hardest things to get across in comics, like the movement of time. And um, he's just incredibly articulate uh, in the way that he explains this stuff. It, in some uh, cases, can be a little bit dense sometimes. So this is not one of those books that you could just kind of breeze through, read once, and you kind of get the gist of it. Uh, this is a book that I've had for years, and I oftentimes revisit just certain chapters. Um, I base some, some uh, actually base some lessons uh, when I teach out of this book. So um, it's a really great resource uh, for anyone who's interested in writing comics, drawing comics, making comics. Um, so yeah, if you're not already familiar with this one, I definitely recommend it. There's a couple of uh, resources online that I'll also recommend and I'll try to link down below. Uh, one is a channel that I really love. Some of you might also be familiar with it. It's called Cartoonist Kayfabe. It's probably one of my favorite YouTube channels here about comics. And they recently made a video where they took a deep dive into this book and they just kind of gave you a tour of the book with their own commentary. And um, it was just done really well. And um, I'll try to link that down below just to get a little better idea of the book. Whether you've read it or haven't, I think that's a good companion piece. Also, one of the things that I've been doing lately is watching Scott McCloud interviews where he talks about some of the ideas in this book. Because like I said, some of the chapters in, the, in this book are a little dense. So hearing him actually talk about it um, and articulate it with his voice is actually, um, it makes a lot more sense that way. So. Um, I'll try to link an interview that I was recently watching with him. Um, and if you're interested in watching that as a companion piece with the book. So, um, yeah, this is definitely an essential. This is up there with how to draw comics the Marvel way for me. So, uh, yeah, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so since I already made a whole video on this book, I'm not going to go too much into it, but I definitely wanted to put it on the list because uh, it's an essential book when it comes to inking comics. I will link that video down below if you're interested in watching it, but I'll just give a brief rundown of this book. So like I said, if you're interested in inking comics or just inking your illustrations, using a brush, using a pen nib, whatever it might be, uh, this is really the book for you. Uh, this is Gary Martin's the art of comic book inking. And uh, the great thing about this book is that um, Gary Martin writes it, but there's all these different versions of, uh, so he'll, so Steve Rude does all the illustrations, right, in the book. And Steve Rude is just an incredible comic book artist. And then Gary Martin will ink a version and then he'll have other inkers from the industry ink that same page. And each one of those inkers will talk about their approach and the tools that they use. And it's really cool because when I'm flipping through this book, I'm always going back and forth and back and forth, you know, from inker to inker, just to see like, look at the softness of those lines versus, for instance, the more rigid pen lines of, of uh, Tom Palmer over here. So um, yeah, it's just a really great book to do that. There's so many different examples of different inkers inking the same image. So you just get to see all the different approaches. And then in the beginning, um, he goes over all the fundamentals uh, in terms of different line making, uh, shading, hatching, cross hatching, all that kind of stuff. It's really great. Best part about the book is that in the back, there are actual um, Bristol board blue line pencil pages where you can ink on top of it. So um, over the years I've brought these into my classes. So this has sort of become like a, a jam comic of all my students from over the semesters uh, to work on. But this is definitely one of the highlights of the book for sure because this is actually really good quality Bristol paper. And um, like I said, everything's printed out in blue line so you could just ink right on top of it um, and see your work really clearly. So um, yeah, I definitely recommend this book for sure when it comes to inking. Um, really great resource. I revisit this book quite often 
And um, I've, I've looked at a lot of inking books, and so far, this is my favorite. Um, I'll keep mentioning the uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, just because they have a really good chapter on inking. But um, as far as a whole book of inking goes, this is the one you want to pick up. So I'll definitely link, leave a link down below to where you could get this book. All right, the final book for now. Um, this is called Framed Ink. And I really don't know how to say the author's name. I'm not even going to try. Just be, It's Marcos. <laughs> we'll just leave it at Marcos. But uh, I believe he's a European um, comic artist, an animator, storyboard artist. Um, so this book isn't necessarily just for um, comic book artists. So you can see here, drawing and composition for visual storytellers. So visual storytellers is a broad term, and I think that's really well put just because... Um, this is great for a storyboard artist, a comic book artist, an animator, um, anyone who's interested in telling any kind of story with their images. And um, this book was actually a gift to me, and it's uh, definitely one of the best uh, book gifts I've ever gotten because um, it's one of my favorite art books for sure. It, Like I said, it, it applies to learning uh, comic book art in the way of um, I would say composition mainly, uh, balancing, how to balance black and white within a composition to actually lead the eye in certain, uh, in certain places, how to convey a certain emotion uh, with composition, how to convey time passing with composition, how to avoid tangents, all that kind of stuff. So this is a really great book. And uh, recently I've come across some of Marcos's other books and um, he has a really great book on perspective. I think it's actually a two part book on perspective. I, I actually um, was browsing through a couple of those books recently in a library and um, made a note that I have to buy those books pretty soon because th those looked like um, some of the best uh, resource for perspective that I've seen. Uh, so I definitely want to brush up on my perspective and those books look great. So, uh, but this book is, like I said, a really great resource when it comes to composition and balancing black and white. Uh, so yeah, for you illustrators out there, comic artists, animators, definitely pick this one up. Um, anytime I show this book to students, they're pretty familiar with it. So uh, you may be as well. If not, though, uh, I'll leave a link down below where you might want to pick this up. Cool. All right, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed looking through some of these books with me. Uh, like I said, I still revisit these books regularly, but it was really nice to flip through them and kind of articulate what it is that I really like about these books. Like I mentioned throughout the video, I'll leave some links down below where you can get some of these books if you don't have them and if you're interested in picking some up. Leave a comment down below. I would love to know what your favorite book on making comics is. I know there's so many out there and I only sort of scratched the surface here. So I would love to hear what, uh, what books you really love on this topic. Also, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below too. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I'm looking forward to bringing you some more videos in the future. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.